Good day, um, ladies and gentlemen and friends from the channel. Today I do a little experiment and uh, show you a different camera angle, see if that works maybe better. Stuff is not that close. Maybe we can see better what we are looking at. Today I want to have a, a look at the BMW iZ250. It's uh, from Revolt and it is uh, a kit. It was actually my very, very first model which I ever built and painted it and so on and so forth. And I love that little car, I really do. I wish I could own one. So I'm six foot nine. I would make myself fit and, and I'd really love to have that. But anyway, I have it as a model and this one I would want to do different, better, proper. Uh, as proper as I can do it. And I got it as a bargain, which is the reason I bought it. I got it for 390 Rand, which is uh, $30 roundabout. And uh, that for us is a, is a bargain for a 1 to 16 model. And, uh, and on the box itself, there isn't much to see. It gives you some detailed shots here at the back. So, uh, want to see those. Need to get used to the new camera. Here you are. The colors which you're supposed to use and all that kind of stuff. Here we are. And uh, let's see what it comes with. It comes obviously with the uh, typical Revell. Um, color chart looks like this. Hey, here, we here we go. Typical with our color chart. It comes with the, uh, with the as it is usual for the Europeans, the sprues to control. Give yourself the opportunity to control what is in the packet if everything is there. Then you also have obviously the instructions, which are even in, in color and very very nice exactly how I remembered them and if you start out uh, with modeling I think that might be a model which is nice because uh, it's big and uh, you can it's not as fiddly and it's and it's beautiful come on it's sweet it really is it also comes with decals let's have a quick look at those I remember those decals uh, well here you are, the white walls have to be decaled on. I remember that I did that and actually it actually worked out quite fine. There's a seat covers. Uh, there isn't much of a dashboard. Um, it's very, very small. And uh, here you are, you can see some of the dashboard decals. If you look very carefully there, number six. I obviously the BMW sign and then a wide selection of number plates. Vehicles look decent quality, as they mostly do with the Revolve, and uh, that is that. Right, let's pack that away and let's see what is in the box. Let's start with the glass, which is right over here. There you go, you can have a good look at the glass. Here we go, there's the camera, here you go. It's actually very very neat um, looks good no scratches or that kind of stuff this uh, would be the back glass or the front glass I think and then we have the sides and the backs right over here very decent no flash and of course it is glass I will immediately put it back into the uh, plastic Sorry for the waste of time here. Okay. Can do it. What is not that nice is that both glass uh, do it later. Those glass screws are coming in the same plastic, but I wish they would have been uh, separate. Wasn't the case, and let's have a look at uh, the chrome. You can see that also doesn't look as bad, very, very nice. Um, uh, looking at the quality of the sprues and the quality of the parts, it all looks um, very clean actually, very nice. So, these are the Zeta chrome parts, and uh, 
There are no options, uh, the Z is the better, that's what she looks like. I also got it as a bubble car actually, um, uh, the real bubble. And these are some grey parts which have uh, the engine, exhaust and uh, other parts like the floor, some smaller parts and also uh, the chain housing because it was chain driven by a motorcycle engine. Here we go, let's turn it around to you. you here we go. You can see it, uh, you see that the chain housing right over here and obviously you can see the floor plan and the engine halves and some smaller parts. Once again, let's get a bit closer here to look at the quality of the parts and you see there isn't much flesh at all. There's a bit of sanding to be done at the seams, but that is something which is particularly difficult to do. Once we've done that, let's have a look at some whites right over here. And uh, most of the parts are white. You can see them over here. Here we go. That's uh, the, the the pen where the seats go in and you see the seat here as well very nice and then you can also see some of the smaller parts which gives us another opportunity to look at the quality of the plastic here we go looks very very nice you see a suitcase over here the roof steering wheel over there here you go that actually all looks very very neat and uh, these uh, two things, I remember them very well. They're actually to hold on the suitcase on the back and they break very, very easily. So be careful when you work with those. And here you can see, this is a little rack which goes at the back of the Isetta. Of course, it didn't have a boot, obviously. So there was no space for that. So that suitcase would then be your boot. You had to travel light, but it was a two people car only. So it wasn't too difficult. Then uh, let's have the last one, it's a bigger one right over here. Here we go, you see the parts are all 1 to 16, so keep that in mind, it's 1 to 16. Here we go, um, that is uh, the other parts which you can see here, the pedals, um, some of the railings which come at the back. Um, let's have a, just have a look at the, at the smaller parts over here. Here we go, just to give you an idea of the quality. I mean, it is a rebel kit, but it, that looks very decent indeed. I hear you guys moaning and groaning about rebels, and you never buy them. Well, I think they have some wonderful models, and they obviously have some bad ones as well. But this is certainly one of the better ones. And since I have built it once before, I can only but recommend it. Then, last but not least, let's go. For the sweet parts, right over here. Here we have uh, the lamps. Here we go, that's a bit closer. Here you go. Lamps over here. The door right over here. Let's turn that around. Here we go. Very, very nice. And then here on this side, you can see what you would in another car would be the bonnet. Well it is, the bonnet is on the side uh, at an Isetta and this is basically the engine compartment where you close it and you see it has the little rooms over here to let the air in. And then let's have a look at the at the body which is right over here. This is what she looks like. Nicely stabilized so that it doesn't go skew of stabilizing parts in which we will then have to remove obviously and uh, yeah it looks very very nice uh, if I ride over here uh, there are hardly any anything here which you need to sand right over here there's something yeah there there on the front you'll see a fine line which you will have to have a quick go at but otherwise very sweet love it love it love it uh, obviously, I'm talking with a big portion of nostalgia. And uh, so in the meantime, I would say let's just pause it here for a minute. I'll just get the model which I've built so you get more or less an idea 
what it should look like at the end. Please keep in mind it was my very first hand painted model. Well, here I am back and it's unbelievable how dusty your models get when they sit outside. So, but anyway, gives you an idea. That was the first model I built, the BMW Isetta. You see it's full of dust. So I will, once I'm finished with this video, get some Windex out and give it a light polish over. So it looks a bit better. Luckily, nobody cleans it who shouldn't, so that's good. And then obviously you have the door, it opens, has the door open. You can see inside and you can see how the steam wheel goes out in it with it. And it was a, I remember, it, I was very, very proud. This was my very first model, wonderfully done. Uh, as far as I was concerned, obviously then I went on to the internet groups and saw what other people did and it wasn't that great anymore. But anyway, if you look at the white walls over here, it's not that bad. It's not that bad for white walls, which are just uh, decals. So uh, not too bad. If you uh, look very carefully, this is where I broke one of those straps. Oh, well, obviously now I might be able to make myself another one. But anyway, that gives you an idea what we are, what I was looking at today. I was looking at the BMW Isetta 250. 250 is uh, 250 cubic centimeters. That's the size of the engine. It is a one cylinder air cooled engine, BMW motorbike engine. Um, and uh, the, uh, what is in the way? Oh, this thing. Yeah. And, uh, the car was actually, the body was actually built by um, Pisa. It was an Italian company. They actually made appliances, but they also made little cars. And uh, one of them was the BMW Isetta. And Isetta then just took it over, put the engine and drivetrain in. And this was the car which sold quite well in the, in the after war Germany in the 50s. And uh, I stopped building it in the early 60s. Because by then people could afford something bigger like a beetle. Ooh. I have a 1 to 16 beetle as well, which I got on my last Germany trip, and I will show you them in one of the next shows. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoy this little one BMW Isetta. We will have, well, I will have some fun with that, and uh, I can't wait till I get to build it again and improve on my last. Uh, efforts. Well, thanks very much for watching. All the best from Cape Town and uh, goodbye.